as I said, um, I actually asked Scott to come in today to uh, kind of mix it up a little because <clears throat> normally we stay on the track of the Wicket University and go through. And although they're very good, I mean, we even, we're going back and redoing some of them that have been very helpful. Um, again, just thought we mix it up a little bit. And I uh, also have asked Lee to step in once a month and also do something on financing. Good. So you don't know when. As I said, I'm going to keep you guessing mm -hmm. to see uh, you know, what ends up showing up here. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not going to what? <laughs> so, and uh, I'm sure everybody knows Scott. Okay. And uh, he's just going to do a little something little thing. on expired. Kind of. A big thing. Kind of. Uh, actually, kinda. Right. pulled uh, some of them up before, so. All right. Um, <clears throat> you're here, which is good. So congratulations to you for taking the time. Um, what I'm going to you know, talk about is, you know, guys, me, I talk a little bit, have a different perspective on things. And um, what I want to talk to you about is, is something that I, I share with my clients, which the first thing we're not going to talk about is we're not going to talk about real estate. You know, because we always think we have to get, you know, train in real estate, train in real estate, train in real estate. And it's not always about real estate. And succeeding isn't always about succeeding in real estate. It's about succeeding in a thinking process. And that's kind of what I want to share with you is a thinking process, not necessarily tagged to real estate, but you're going to see how important it is and how, how effective it is when it comes to real estate. So. What I call this is the mindset of no. And really no is the really the main driver in so many things in our life of things that we do and we don't do. The action that we take and the action that we don't take. And we're often guided by the word no. And the word is a paralyzing word. It stops us from a lot of things. And you know what I want to bring to your table today is, is things to, you know, to help make more money, to, to be more effective and more productive. So I want to talk to you about my perspective on the word no and, and maybe get your perspective on the word no and maybe it'll help you with a thinking process which will maybe help you do more things to get more business and get more money and, and to be there. So I call it the mindset of no. Now when you think about the word no, it's something that it's really the first word that we probably learned when we were children. Um, and we've always associated the word no with negative. And we hear the word no before we even learn to speak, right? Because we go to crawl, no, don't touch it. No, it's always no. And this no gets mapped in our brain as a negative thought and negative. What we can't do, it's all about the no. And so we take that through life and as we become older, it, it stays with us. And we carry that interpretation of no into often our professional lives in college and you know high school and schools. No is always associated with something potentially negative. And we develop this thinking process of no. And <clears throat> what happens is, is that when we get into the world of sales, which is what we're in, that thinking process, if you maintain it, is a paralyzer in doing more things because it stops us. <clears throat> excuse me, from taking action with respect to certain things. And we often have the belief system that in sales, if we get a no, then that's a bad thing, right? You made a phone call to a FISBO. Can I come over? No. And they slam the phone down on the hook. How does that make you feel? Crummy. Crummy. Don't want to do it. Not going to do it. If that's what I perceive the no of giving me, then I'm going to be inclined to do what? Not do it. Not going to do it. Because no carries with it a negative connotation, especially people think that in sales. Um, and it often mirrors our thoughts of no when we were younger, you know, of authority telling us and, and putting us in a, in a particular place. So. What's the function of, of no? What's the, what's the act? Well, in sales, if we are salespeople, we have to ask for what? Business. We have to ask. If you're in the business of sales, you have to ask. And we know that when we ask, we run the risk of hearing the word no, which will create these 
feelings, these, these bad feelings of, of that we don't like. And what I want to try to share with you is to try to alter, alter the thinking process of no. To make you feel more comfortable to do what? Take action. To take action. If you see no as a bad thing, you won't take it. If you see no as a good thing, then you'll take it. And no can often be a good thing. When is no a good thing? What if you go to the doctor? Doctor, do I have a disease? And he says, what? No. Or, uh, am I going to be thrown off this plane? No. Uh, you know, no can often be good. But no is actually one of the best things that you can have in sales. Where most people think that if I get lots of no's in sales, that means that I'm bad, I'm failing, I'm not doing good. Actually, no is a, is a good thing. Yes, theoretically, but I think there's a lot of other reasons why no is a good thing. Because you still have to get through that emotion of the, the yes. If I said to you, listen, there's going to be 50 no's to you get to the yes, and in your mind you go, well, that means I'm going to be beat up 50 times, I'm going to feel like crap 50 times, I'm going to be made to feel terrible 50 times, you know what? I'm not going to do it. Even though I know down at the end of the road, it's how you feel about the first no, so it doesn't hurt you, and you can go on to that possibility. So, what I call it is, I call it the bad no. We have a bad no. And what does the bad no mean to us in sales? And this is what we want to alter the thinking process of the bad no. If you think no means failure, then it's going to stop you. If you think no means that you're not liked, when somebody doesn't want you, you're not liked, I'm not going to pick up the phone make a phone call. We often create the no as another bad feeling because I didn't get what I wanted. I didn't make the sale. That's another bad thing, right? I wanted something. It's like when you were a kid. Mom, can I have it? No, I didn't get it. I may be inhibited to ask again because I don't want to deal with the not getting it. Um, we often see the no and hear the no as a poor self-reflection of ourselves. It's a reminder that I may not be good. And I don't want that reminder. I think I'm unbelievable. I kiss myself every day. You know? I don't want anybody to remind me that I might not be good if I see the no that way. And this is why we avoid the bad no. And there's anyone else have another reason? What stops you? What does the word no do to you? How does it make you feel? Inadequate. Not good enough. We often also have the thought that if I get a no and I spend time, I've wasted time. Yes. I don't want to put in two hours of work because I won't get something and I've wasted time. That's another reason of the bad no. Well, I have a completely different vision and different view of what the word no means and maybe it can help you think a little bit differently about what that is. We can change our perception of the word no. And here's what no means to me. The first thing no means to me is that I try. And that's a good thing. I feel good when I know, when I can put my head down on the pillow and go, you know what? At least I try. And is there any negative feeling in a try? <laughs> it's all good. We always feel good when we try something. Even if we try something new or we, tr we tried something. When was the last time you tried something and it really blew up in your face and was horrible? Not often. Sometimes. When you marry your husband. Okay. There you go. He's recording. But the good feeling, we'll edit that out. But the good feeling from the no is, I tried. Number two, I made an attempt. I attempted something and it's kind of the same thing, but it's a good feeling to make an attempt towards something that I may have had a different perspective about. The other reason why I like to hear the word no, because it re reaffirms to my mind that I believe in myself. I believe in myself enough to ask. So when I hear no in my head, you know what, at least I believe in myself, and that's a good feeling. That makes me feel good about myself. It also lets me know that I have the confidence to ask. Don't you want to be perceived as a confident person?